Uh, my name is Laura Moss. I am the, on the board of directors of Yes Tomorrow Design Build School. I am absolutely thrilled to be here and to be emceeing this event. Um, welcome again uh, on behalf of Yes Tomorrow and on the, for the Tiny House Fest. Um, I'm going to get right into introducing our first speaker. Uh, his name is Jacob Mushlin. He is a, yep, he is a student of, of Yes Tomorrow. He uh, attended the Sustainable Treehouse Design and Construction in the spring of 2008. Uh, wonderful dude, very talented. <laughs> um, uh, his uh, presentation uh, is titled, Don't Get Sketched Out Over SketchUp. We all know that SketchUp is a tool to use and it, at times it can be very frustrating. Um, and hopefully this uh, presentation will walk you through the trials and tribulations and just really allow you to chill out with SketchUp. So without further ado, Jacob Mushlin. feedback I've had for my entire life is I'm pretty loud. I'm going to opt out of the microphone. Uh, if you can't hear me, let me know. And if you're just here for breakfast, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, thank you very much. And genuinely, thanks for coming out. It's like a rainy Sunday morning, and you signed up for whatever reason to watch someone use a computer program. So that's kind of on you. Um, pardon me, I need to start the timer. So SketchUp is a tool. I have 25 minutes to help you feel comfortable about it. And really what I want to do is create an access point for you. There are folks who are extremely professional that use this tool. I'm kind of one of them. There are folks that like downloaded it and used it twice, and they've also used that program. And you're likely going to fall somewhere on that spectrum. Um, if I gave this marker to Frank Lloyd Wright or Julia Morgan, a female architect you should look up, they would have really powerful ideas, and they could quickly and elegantly draw like a beautiful and communicative construction document, right? They have ideas. Pardon me, I got my Marco Rubio moment. Um, SketchUp is no different. It works best if you have like a silly little idea, and even better if you have a silly little sketch to start with, and then you start using the tool. On that spectrum of extremely professional and extremely novice, there's a million ways you can start participating with it. That's totally going to be valuable. But what I want to recommend is don't start off trying to be on this side of that spectrum. Start off, it's like speech. Uh, if you start with a simple vocabulary and a sense of what you want to say, you're going to do all right. If you start throwing around words that you don't really know the meaning of, you're probably just going to confuse people. Now you should actively be looking to grow that vocabulary, but like know the word esoteric before you use it, or you're going to fall on the wrong side of its definition. Um, so to start off, there's two types of drawing in the world. There's drawing for thought, drawing for process, drawing for iteration, and there's drawing for presentation. Drawing for presentation looks like pretty hot, it's like complicated, there's arrows. You know that stuff means something, maybe you don't know what it means, but clearly there's a lot of information there. And what you're looking at on each page is hours and hours and hours of process and of iteration. The drawings I want you to start making are the beginning, right? So first of all, I didn't design this. Our, our master and commander, uh, Aaron, designed the house you're looking at. I, I turned that design into construction documents, so we're going to talk about that whole process. But I think this whole house started as a, a silly little idea and a silly little sketch. And it was a good idea. And as Erin continued to visit that design, she processed it. She was in the think phase. And the longer you can spend in that think phase, the better your final design will be. I normally don't touch SketchUp until I'm like somewhere in the middle, where I feel like I've thought about enough that the building isn't going to change a ton, where I think like 80% has been settled. There's nothing wrong with starting earlier than that. There really isn't. And if you're new to the program, keep it simple, have a simple vocabulary, and you'll be great. So again, this is just sort of the intro of how you want to use the tool. So Erin provided me with this model. Erin knows how to use SketchUp. She don't mess around. This is what I would call a massing model. I couldn't take this and hand it to a, well, let me rewind. I could take this model and hand it to a builder and say, Karen, build me this tiny house. And Karen would be like, look, I see what you got going on. You got this bump out windows, but like, how big are those windows in real life? 
And Aaron might be like, I don't know, I drew them because that, that was the right proportion, it felt right. And that's cool, but what Karen's gonna need to do is actually get a real window with a real size on it. This massing model is really valuable. The goal will be to have the final house look like that. But somewhere the rubber needs to meet the road. That isn't your job. It doesn't have to be your job. You don't have to worry about any of that. You might have to pay someone else to do that, just so you know. But like, there's nothing wrong with essentially starting off with something even closer to this, but on SketchUp. Aaron's way ahead of this. So, we went from our idea to this massing model. And we're gonna get a little weird. Ooh, it's a ghost now. We can look around and just, just coming down from above, right, we've got like a loft going on there, some seating, big doors, we've got like a kitchen thing. She's real clever, she's like stacking all of her water together. So like the plumbing is just sort of in this core. On the other side, you've got a shower, this like crazy tub, you can see the blue water of the tub and this like a little scandalous outdoor shower connected to the other side. It's a really great design. I took that and by virtue of experience, took all the fun out of it, right? What you're looking at is like every piece of wood that like legally has to be in the building for it to stay up. Um, I, did, I am not an engineer, I'm not even an architect, although I commit acts of architecture. And when, I, when there are questions that I don't know how to answer or I am not qualified to answer, I hire a professional. Uh, this weird bump out thing. It was like a real uh, thing to think about to not swear in public. Um, and I hired a wonderful engineering firm that I've worked with before. And they're like, yeah, that's weird. Uh, let's work it out. And they did, they did a great job. There's all this metal strapping. Um, these drawings though aren't, aren't really what you should be aiming for. Uh, they're a necessary step in that process, and it's from that model that we got here. And again, this, is, this isn't poetry, this is, this is math. And I'm going to implore you to not aim for this target if you're new to the tool. So that's like the broad spectrum, like there's a lot going on here. You'll do best if you start off with a silly little idea and a silly little sketch, and then you pick up this pencil. Make sense? Any questions? Everyone's quiet. There's free coffee. I don't know if it's free. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're actually going to start playing with the program. We're going to start fresh. And every once in a while, I'm going to say, this is important. You should write this down. You don't have to, but I've taught SketchUp to a good number of people. There's like three things that you can do to really make your life easier. And if you do them, you'll be, you'll be doing really well. Repeat with me. Make everything a component. Make everything. All right. The second rule of SketchUp is make everything a component. Yeah. And the third rule of SketchUp is use layers. Use layers. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, still got some. Cool. Uh, quick survey. Uh, raise your hand if you'd consider yourself a builder, if it's been your profession or your background. All right, all right, all right. Got some bodies. How about folks that are just you know shopping around, never seen it before, kind of interested in toying. Cool. And uh, if you didn't raise your hand, yell out why you're here. I drove the builder here. <laughs> All right, and you're in the back. <laughs> Outstanding. SketchUp's cool. Um, Y'all made a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, like everyone at this point, if you're in the Western world and you've been employed, you've made a PowerPoint presentation. Fundamentally, SketchUp can be that simple and that accessible. There's a whole bunch of other crap that you don't have to know how to use to have a compelling building. But like, you're good, you're already there. If you're a builder and you're over the age of 40, you probably haven't hung too much with a mouse in your hand. You probably mostly had a hammer or a screw gun. That's cool. You might not know this, but SketchUp, if it wasn't designed by actual builders, they certainly did a good job of interviewing builders. A lot of tools, you're gonna be like, oh, they're just snapping a line. I know about snapping lines, which is pretty clutch. So we're gonna start off with a, with a wicked simple little thing. Um, First off, looking over on this side, uh, that's the arrow. It essentially is like tool-less-ness, right? Just, just a simple cursor. Most everything in architecture is going to be a square, because that's where we're at. Rectangle, click on it. Ooh, I got a rectangle. Pretty sweet. Here's the deal, though. Like, if you look in this bottom corner, and here's where we're going to get like real boring because we're watching a screen. You can see me move that mouse around, and like the numbers change a bunch. 
And I can sit here and try to be like, all right, 10 feet by, oh, there's eight in that one by 16. That's not how it works. You simply type in the size that you're looking for, and there we go. This very tiny house, well, we'll call it like a bedroom, a separate bedroom. Eight feet by 12 feet, and I up and did it. What's the first thing you do in SketchUp? You make it a component, darn tootin'. Let's talk about components. Who here has made bread? Cool. So it rises, it falls. You make a little mound on the table. And maybe you have another little mound right next to it. And too much time passes and the two, the two unbaked loaves touch. And now you go to move one of them and it's like... Right? It like squishes away into space with it. Before you make something a component, it's kind of like an unbaked loaf of bread. I can just move that thing around. After you've made something a component, you've baked that bread. So these two loaves that were unbaked, that were essentially like conjoining themselves as twins and were very squishy, now they're solids. Now I can separate the two and I'm doing really well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you a component. <laughs> uh, I'm used to doing a bunch of shorthand keystrokes. Uh, so we're gonna do that and you'll be fine. So check me out now, I'm gonna draw another rectangle on top of that. I move this rectangle independently, I'm gonna to try to just grab one section of the one that hasn't been baked yet, and boy, that's not how I want to work it. Make everything a, a component, do it instantaneously. Uh, who here played with, with Play-Doh growing up? Yeah, you're probably also over the age of 40, I don't know if they're still doing that. The next best tool to be using if you really want to like add some verbs is this one. Push, pull. It does exactly what it sounds like. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unbake this loaf of bread by double clicking on it. Boop. And this little bounding box is telling me that like, ah, the loaf is no longer baked. Be mindful of what you're doing. I'm going to click on that push, pull. And uh, sir sitting down in the front holding the water. How tall are the walls on this building? This building? This building. 16. No, I mean this building. Oh, that Two? I mean, come on, let's make it something we can be in. Give me something oh, between six and ten. Oh, eight. eight, love it, killed it. So I click, I start dragging up. Hey, that same little corner, right? Where we told it how big we want the big square to be. Oh, look at that, it's asking me how tall I want it. Eight feet, but dongs. Looks great. We made a box, nice job. High tech designer. So that's cool. Uh, still, still bound, right? Still a big loaf of bread. And let's put a roof on it. Um, Dylan, I, no, sorry, Nick, I can't use you. Robin in the red hat. Shed roof, gable roof, gambrel. Yeah, let's do gable. Offset or center? All right, we'll keep it simple, I appreciate that. So now we have a complicated job. We wanna turn the face of this building into like what every child in the Western Hemisphere draws when they're drawing a house, right? Triangular top, a pediment, if you will. So let's do that. Uh, there's a I'm gonna take another step back. Like many things in life, there are many ways to uh, skin a cat. There's a myriad of ways I could go about doing the next step. I'm gonna show you the way that I do it, but I'm also gonna, I'm gonna show you the way that I would do it straight out. I'm also gonna make up some other ways. So SketchUp is a really smart tool. It knows that if I copy this edge, which I just did, and I start dragging it over, a little dot's gonna show up in the middle. Be like, boop, you found the middle, great. I want this cable centered, I'll leave it there. If I weren't doing that, I could select the tape measure tool, boop, grab onto an edge of the building, and here's where my builders are at, they're like, oh, you're just snapping a line, you're using a plumb stick, right? We all recognize what's happening right there. I can drop that, in, drop that guide in. And you know what? Instead of choosing a line and telling the computer to copy it, I'm gonna draw a fresh line, let's keep it fresh. Cool. Now I need to apply a slope. Hey, plus 10 points, what's a slope on a building? Angle, one more time? Uh, essentially, yeah, it's like, come on, a couple more people. Rise and run, oh, give that person a golden star. Heck yeah. So let's say, uh, okay, how about uh, Dr. Plaid with the beard? What's my slope? Give me a number between one and 12. Don't mess it up. Oh, steep guy over here, all right. So for all you builders out there, check it out. I'm gonna draw a line down in that corner. I'm gonna type in 12, that's my run. 
And then on that edge, you see I'm pulling that blue line straight up, I'm typing in 10. I just created the two lines to get my hypotenuse of a 10-12 slope. And see how that line is purple now? That purple line is indicating that it is perfectly in axis with the hypotenuse that I just drew. And now check me out, we're just doing geometry here, right? We have an intersection of the center of that face, we have a hypotenuse, so if I come down to the other corner, bam, that thing is super symmetrical. But notice, it's still see-through. I haven't defined a plane yet. I have two lines. How many points do I need to define a plane, geometry? Who's that? Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to draw another line right here. Yeah. And this is going to turn white. It's going to look like a folded napkin. Three, two, one. Oh, exciting. Let me ask you this. Have we made that a component yet? What do we do? Darn right. Now it's a component. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. I can't hear you in the back. Really? I can't. Okay. <laughs> Time to mix some beats. Can the folks in the back hear me now? Closer to your mouth. Closer to my mouth. Oh. I got a bandmate here. She knows I hate being on a microphone. Outstanding. I also, okay, I do need to use a stand. Look at that hands-free device. So, we have our triangle, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull that thing across, boop, and check me out. In like 15 keystrokes, we've drawn, again, what like every Western child thinks of when they think of like a quote-unquote house. Pretty straightforward. And if I bring this to a builder and I say build this, they're not gonna have a ton of information, but they're gonna know you're looking for something that's got a gable roof and they're gonna have a sense of how tall it is. And already, like, right out of the gates, we've got something that's, like, not super functional, but at least starts a conversation. Yeah? When you're in a, in a sketch like this, would a builder be able to look at it and see the measurements of the height of your roof and the angle of your gable as well? Super great question. The question was, if we were to hand this model off to a builder, can they reverse engineer what we've done? Can they find out sizes? And they totally can. Right, I'm gonna grab the tape measure, and if you recall, our building is eight feet wide, and in that bottom corner, you're gonna watch again, boop, 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 eight feet. I also like, I currently don't know the elevation height of our pediment, so I'm gonna grab on, and this is new information. Turns out that thing is three foot four. Great, now I know. We're gonna talk more about uh, turning these sort of sandbox models, these massing models, into really functional things. But real quick, we're just gonna, we're gonna flash flash forward and, and do a bunch of stuff. So right now, this is a solid block. If I were to cut a section, boop -a -doop, -a -doop, -a doop boop. Hey, look, the whole thing is a solid mass. It's probably not what we want. So we're gonna say uh, the walls are, let's say we're building in this climate. Let's keep it warm. I'm not gonna bother with like half inches because it's a massing model. I'm just gonna say it's a six inch wall. And now I'm gonna extrude, I'm gonna push that ceiling up so it meets the height of the wall. And now when I turn that section back on, hey, look at that. We have an interior, that's kind of fun. It's way easier to be inside when there's an inside. Uh, what else do we wanna add? Maybe some windows? Tack some windows on there? I got a hard yes for a window, outstanding. So I'm gonna be a builder again, I'm gonna snap a line. We're gonna go with 80 inches because it's a tiny house. So just, I'm gonna have that going on. And we're gonna say, we're gonna come inboard three feet from either end, and we're gonna pop some square windows. If I were an architect, I'd say they're puncture windows because they're real tiny. Let's go with, uh, sure, 16 by 16. So I type it in, it's in the bottom corner. I hit enter. My God, that thing's small. I'm gonna break a rule. I'm not gonna make that a component. I know, I know, terrifying, right? So I'm gonna just let my mouse hover, and then you see SketchUp's like, hey Jacob, there's the midpoint. I'm gonna grab it, slide it over to that three foot mark that I determined. I'm gonna do the same thing. I can really easily copy and paste things. And by the way, the reason I'm not like explaining what key to push is all of that information is online, and if I start telling, it you, na telling you it now, you will fall asleep or leave. And those are the right decisions to make if someone is telling you those things. Really, I want to show you that this is playful and very straightforward. So we've got our two windows. They're both unbaked loaves of bread, but they're sitting on top of a baked loaf of bread. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to select all three of those things. And this is a little gross, but now they're all a component. And I'm going to break into that component. And inside of that component is our original component. And I'm going to shatter that thing. This is the most fun part of using the program. Explode. Cool. So now, you know, if I grab onto this window and I try to move it, sorry. If I try to move this around, boy, right? That's like the unbaked loaf of bread. Geometry and reason have left the building. But what I can't, oh geez. But what I can do is use that same push-pull push pull tool and just send that in thing in six inches. And look at that. Now I've got a hole in the building. Some people might call it fenestration. I got windows right out of the gates. And now when I open up that section, I can actually see it show up, right? So if I were a, a builder or an architect and I look at that section, I know that, hey, that's a little window right there. Super easy, super straightforward. Let's keep going. We're going to add uh, a big person window on this side. Uh, sure, three feet by four feet. Just typing it in. It's in that section. And for S and G, we're going to get that thing lined up with the windows on the other side. Now, I can't currently see that other side. So I have a bunch of options. I can do the same offset before, right, where like I hit T for tape measure. I sent the line over. I said three feet. If you're really smart, though, you turn on your x-ray vision. You grab the middle of the window you want to move. You tell the window to only move on one axis. And you grab on to the center of the window on the other side of the wall. Ooh. I also want these to share a height. So I'm going to grab on to the height of the window. I'm going to tell it to only move on one axis. axis and I'm going to grab on to the window on the other side. Turn off my x-ray vision. Push that thing in the same six inches as everything else. And wham, bam, thank you, friend. Got that going on. You know what? Let's, let's keep with this simple symmetry. We're going to pop a door in there. Uh, 80 by. This is a, it's a little building, so we'll say 30. Oh, my. I did something wrong. Hey, what's control Z do? Keeps you professional. That's right. That's right. Um... That looks more like a door. Same game. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's do another little fun thing here. Let's make another section, bring that thing up a touch until I can see both the door I want to move and the window I want to meet. I'm going to grab onto just the door in its midpoint, tell it to just move on one axis, and grab it. And I'm going to turn that off, grab this, have it meet the height of that window, and then just push that thing in six inches. Now, this is not a thrilling design. But I tell you, if I had a cute little dream about a cute little house, and I have this to work with, I now have a place to start a conversation. This isn't the end of it, but on that spectrum from extreme professional to like foolish novice, I'm on it. We're in there now. We're starting a conversation moving forwards. So we only have about four minutes left. And I want to end with about two minutes of questions. And after this session is over, there's another great session. You should see it. You're going to have about five or 10 minutes of downtime. Attack me. Ask me more questions. I'm here for you. I'm also part of the design boiler cooker. I don't know what it's called. You know what I mean, where you show up with a bad idea and we try to make it good for you. Um, real quick, though, this is some real stuff. SketchUp, you can download it for free. SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Free, identical. However, when you download SketchUp Pro, you get this program called Layout, and you get it for 30 days. That's because SketchUp is like the sandbox where you're playing around and you're doing stuff. Layout is where you make your money. Oh, yeah, all right, fine. Save it. Uh, Hannah's shed. Not valid? You're killing me, Smalls. Come on, people are watching. Cool, so I just saved it. I'm now opening Layout. Good times, great oldies. We're having fun. We're watching someone use a program. So in SketchUp, I can save what are called scenes. So let's say I want this, uh, we'll go with this exciting elevation. It's really telling a great story right there. So I'm going to make a scene, uh, but not in the way that I normally do at restaurants. 
So I've created a scene, I've saved my little thing, and burp -a -derp -a -der. Oh, here we go. Layout's like, hey buddy, what, what format do you want? And for whatever reason, my computer, I have to do this to grab that. <laughs> and hey, look at that. There's that thing. And here's where, uh, sorry, your name in the front, no longer paying attention. Maisie. Maisie had that great question of like, can I hand this model off to a builder? And here's what you want to do. You want to hang 10 with layout. Layout is where you make your money. So check this out. This scene is just sort of a snapshot, but I can scale it now. That's too small. Let's go half inch. Boop. And I can even say like, you know what? Let's lose the weird gray stuff. We'll go into our default styles. We'll go hidden line like Chandra Vedante's show. Um, I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm just going to grab on and bam, that building is 12 feet long. Kaboom, from ceiling to floor is eight feet. The elevation of that gable, three foot four. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy that same thing. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to make a new page. I'm going to paste it. Right click. Uh, standard views. We're looking at the left, so let's look at the front. Cool. Going back to D for dimension. Bam. I know how long the run of my rafters are. That's it. That's all. That's us. Um, hopefully the takeaway from all that jazz and the rambling is that you can see this program. You don't have to be an expert in order to use it for good. And I really want to stress that before you can start anything, you want to start with that napkin, with that pencil. And then after you've hung out with that for a little while, start playing with, 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 the, with the more expensive pencils. And if you're really serious about what you're doing, make sure, be it through hiring a professional or doing a lot of research for yourself, make sure at some point the rubber does meet the road and something that doesn't have dimensions eventually does. Something that has holes in the walls that you feel are windows have rough openings for specific windows that are made by a company or that you found at a reuse spot. That stuff's the best. Um, I'm around. Hopefully you have more questions in a good way. And uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>